Hi, it's Phil Healy from Inclusive Music and today what I thought I'd do is create a song from scratch and describe the process that I've been using as I go along to create the song. I've got no set plan, it's going to be a, a case of just discovering samples, trying them out um, with no pre-planned ideas of what the song is going to sound like, but I often sit down at the computer with BandLab and just create a song from scratch and see how it turns out. So I thought I'd do that today, but with the microphone on, commenting on the processes I'm using, my thoughts, my ideas, my um, experimentation to see how it turns out. So here we go, up to create. New project. And I'm going to start with browse loops. Okay, what do I fancy? Maybe some deep house. It's got 106 loops. Let's have a quick look and listen. I always like to start from the bottom because they're often the samples that don't get used so much. Quite interesting. Let's, uh, yeah, let's put it in. Slide across to the beginning. It's set itself at 125 beats per minute. Okay. Okay. Um, Right, let's randomly try a few more things. Quite nice. Oh no. Yeah, not too keen on these uh, chord progressions there. Let's try this one. That's a beat. It's okay. Nothing really inspiring at the moment. nice sound again I'm not so keen on the the sort of chord progression snappy bass quite like that now I'll put two basses in um, I don't think they'll go together but we'll, we'll try them nope not at all uh, let's try some sneak chords. Yes, I like those chords. So I might uh, first of all just mute this one. So we've got the first bass with the sneak chords. See how that sounds. No, I don't think that works. So let's mute that first bass and the second bass with the sneak chord. No. Okay. Um, so, 
keep going up. Um, push and fade. The 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 beat is going to be the easiest thing to find, so I'm not going to concentrate on that at the moment. Effect. What about a plunky bass? Nothing really does it for me there. Party hardy. Yep, it's a beat again. So uh, what about mild attack bass? Let's give it a try. Um, make sure the other bases are off. Because I say my favourite is a sneak chords at the moment. It's um, it's much louder than the sneak chord, so we could turn up the volume here. Maybe turn the bass down a little bit. No, I don't think I don't like the tone so much of that. Um, base so I'm definitely going to delete that right click delete so let's just go back to this sneak chords yes I like them uh, it's a case of finding anything that goes with them micro dot no nope, we're Nice drop bass there, nice sub bass. Could be used later for a sort of an effect. House compressor. Okay. What I'm going to do is speed up the process by going to uh, this arrow here. Um, and let's... We'll do house. I might broaden it a bit. House base. Okay, so here is the house bases we have available. And this is, of course, in Deep House Essentials at the moment. No, don't really like that. Happy base. That's quite nice. Drag it in. Uh, see if it goes with these chords. Now I think that works. Okay, so in that case, let's delete that track and that other bass track. And now I've got my sneak chords and happy bass, which I'm happy with so far. So I think what I need now is a beat. So I'm going to click, take off the bass search. So I've got Deep House Essentials, bass, house, and let's try beats. Let's go to the bottom. Okay, it's got quite a nice stereo effect. Um, it's quite busy. Oh dear, no. Um, by busy, I mean there's lots going on. Although I realise that um, the earlier ones, they're sparser. Yeah. Okay. So I could probably allow the beat to beat us to um, to build up if I wanted it to, but it's, it doesn't really grab me too much at the moment. Let's try push and fade. Oh no, I just did that one. No, not very keen. Party hardy. Oh, that's interesting because that push and fade uh, sounds much better than that one, number four. Let's just try two. Okay, nice kick drum. That'll give me a chance to put other things over the top. 
Okay, so there's at least three beats I like there. I'm going to try that push and fade one because it's it's got a nice groove to it. I'm just a little bit worried about uh, it's it's got a sort of bassy sound to it, and it, that bass note, the frequency might clash with the happy bass, but we might not have to use them together. So first of all, let's try it anyway. Actually, that's quite interesting. Um, let's take out. Uh, let's take out the happy bass a minute. Yes, yeah, so I've got an idea that. Um, yeah, well, let's say that starts off. Uh, this can all change at any point, but I'm just. I think it's important that when you get an idea, you try it out maybe. Um, before I move on, I must remember to save. Okay, so that's important. Uh, but let's just give it a title. Very simply, it's going to be Deep House at the moment. We can save, we can change the title at any time. So, quick save. There we go, your revision has been saved. So from the beginning, ah, now it would help if I um, unmuted that. Okay, we all make mistakes. Great, I'm happy with that so far. Um, so we can take the beats off. Um, right, what is my musical imagination suggesting? Maybe a melody. Uh, I wonder if there is the option here. It doesn't actually say melody, because uh, I guess that's not an instrument or a genre. I could type in melody, see if uh, anything pops up. And I think what I would have to do is reset the search. Uh, yeah, so we've got lots of samples with the word melody in and house. Okay, so I wonder if I could try that house melody. Yeah, I've got. Uh, a limited choice now, but enough to be getting on with. Let's try a few. It's rather dull. Uh, let's try this one. Now it's clearly just going to stay on that one note. Sync house melody. Now I've got to remember that this is obviously the house genre and these types of sounds are very typical of house. So maybe I could start off with house. I say I'm liking what I've got here, but if the sort of the typical melodies that are being offered aren't to my liking, I might come out of the house genre and, and try um, other genres, a bit of fusion. Well, let's see. Now that is on one note, but I quite, I quite like that. Um, so let's put it on a new track. I can imagine that, for example, coming in on its own with the beat. Push and fade, that's the beat. Let's extend that. Almost like a little bit of a breakdown here. 
and by that I mean the, the track's starting to go. He's got three um, instruments here, and then suddenly we take out a couple, and we're left with the beat and a new instrument. So let's go from the beginning and see how it sounds. quite like that. Uh, I think I've got the structure a little bit wrong at the moment. I mean, I think I might be tempted to move the drums back a bit because I like that uh, the start. That's quite nice. Um, and I'm wondering actually that the bass comes in next. Yeah, that's going to work. Um, let's continue that then. And the chords. And let's bring this over a bit. So I've got, yeah, I'm seeing this sort of build up now, which is quite nice for a, for a song. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to save my work again. I'm going to look again at that push and fade drum beat. Uh, I'd like perhaps I like a variation on that. So um, let's delete that, reset, um, put in push and fade in the hope that. Uh, there's a few more variations. Yep, they've come up. I've used number one, so let's try number two. Aha, uh -huh. yep, now I remember. We've, done, we've had a listen to these before. That's the hi-hat, yep. And the first one I heard. Yeah, initially I didn't like that. The rhythm feels very strange. But maybe in context, it would sound good. So I think I'm going to bring this uh, back because when the, this sort of house fly melody comes in, I think the rhythm should change slightly. So, um, well, let's try that. You never know. It's always worth experimenting, trying things out. Let's, um, yeah. I'm going in four bars, groups of four bars. That's uh, fitting the sort of four, four on the floor. Um, dance type of music. I'm going to listen to it just from bar 13 first. No, I don't like that. They've both got very interesting rhythms, let's say, but they conflict a bit. They sort of clash when they're together. Um, so I'm going to take that out. I could just uh, press delete on the keyboard, QWERTY keyboard. Uh, so we've got the kick drum, or we've got the hi-hat, let's try the kick first, from bar 13. That works nicely, let's hear it in context, we'll go back to bar 9. Yes, I think I'm happy with that for the moment. A little trick is just to take off um, 
one bar before the end. Let me explain myself a bit better. I want to shorten. I think I'm going to shorten the drums. Uh, oh, wrong one. This one to uh, let's get it accurate. Make sure I'm on bar 16. I think that's good. So yes, effectively, I'm chopping off that last bar so that the focus is on that um, house fly melody. Let's go from the beginning. Have a listen. Yep, that works. But interestingly enough, I now <laughs> I don't like that. I do like the drum, but I don't like it coming in with everything in. In other words, if I just solo this drum, um, yeah, there's a kick drum. There's a sort of um, uh, some sort of like low tom, which has got this bassy type sound. It's sort of giving the game away too soon, maybe. Uh, maybe I'll just drag it over here and uh, it, perhaps it could come in at 17. Maybe this uh, hi-hat. Yeah. So I'm thinking of building the drum. I'm thinking of building the drum beat up. So it starts with a hi-hat. The kick comes in and then we get the full beat at bar 17. So effectively 16 bars intro uh, and then we're into... The, maybe the verse or the chorus or but just just the next section. Let's go from the beginning. Yeah, not, I'm not quite sure what's not quite right there, but it's not at the moment. Having said that, I am still going to save it. It's great to save your work every five minutes, if you can remember. Um, let's just hear this again. Okay. Um, Maybe it's, it'd be nice to put something in that gap, some sort of um, riser. And the riser effects are basically a, a note or some sound that starts low and builds up. So having put that in, riser, um, we can see we've probably got about a choice of 30. Um, now, this, isn't any, this is not just house now. This is from the whole collection of band lab loops. Um, so there'll be some that aren't appropriate, and this, but maybe there's some that are. So let's try this one. Okay, interesting possibility. Um, I could put it in there, but at the moment I'm going to keep separating the tracks. We've got 12 maximum in band lab. I've used five so far and at this stage I like to keep things separate for example these are chords this is the bass this is the drums a melody riser I would call effects so let's see if I can keep that going uh, let's go from here <laughs> That's very loud for a start. We can see it's loud because the waveform shape is right to the roof, right to the ceiling, and right to the floor. Whereas here on the sneak chords, it's very much smaller, and consequently, it's very much more quiet. We could take it down here on the 
the balance control, the volume control. Uh, I'm also thinking it needs stopping as the drum comes in because it sort of takes takes away from the the drum. Let's try. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's so, sort of okay. The drum feels a bit lost at the moment, but it's possibly because I haven't got anything else uh, here. Um, I don't really want to go into another section yet. It feels like we could we could keep with this bass and these chords uh, for a while longer. Again, it's a house track, and um, I'm not an expert on on house or deep house, but uh, it does seem. Um, there's a lot of slow build-ups and very subtle changes. Uh, some people consider it quite boring because it goes on too long. But at this point, I feel I don't really want to do any dramatic changes. I just I think we're still building the track in terms of volume, and we've now got the full beat in. So let me copy the bass. I'm going to right-click, copy, and put my cursor on bar 17, and right-click, paste. Uh, oh yes, the screen's all moved up, but basically that's done exactly what I wanted. I think we can probably extend the drums now. It's gone for eight bars, which is perfect again. It fits in with the four beats to the bar. Let's have a listen to that. Yeah, that works. Um, it feels like after eight bars, that might be when the this other sound, the sneak chords, comes in. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to make sure that cursor is dead on 25 and uh, paste here. So that's come in. And if I want to see the screen a little bit better, I go down to the the bottom right corner and zoom out and we'll do it again so I can now see the entire song as it is so far um, loop uh, no sorry I get the ability to to loop it or to copy it effectively so let's just try that let's go from um, let's go from bar 13 I think I've gone a bit too far. Yes, and I can see why, because I think I've gone from 17 to 25. That's eight bars, and this is effectively 12 bars at the moment. Doesn't quite feel right. It feels a bit too long. So back to eight bars. Uh, so we've got um, bass and the drums coming in for eight bars here. Then we've got this uh, sneak chords coming in from eight bars as well um, and because I've zoomed out uh, we're missing out 26 and then 28 but we know that from 25 to 33 is eight bars let's say that and I thought there might need to be something after the first four bars uh, maybe ooh, uh, maybe another riser who knows let's, let's see what we got Yes, that's quite fun. I'm going to put it on the riser track, or I would call it the effects track, and uh, I may not use it for a full four bars here. Uh, I'm thinking of shortening it, but let's have a listen. No, I like that. 
now. Uh, I've got an automatic um, <laughs> tendency there to, to just uh, stop it there and uh, put that riser in again. I'm not sure why. I just, I just again, I, I'm imagining this is what happened. This is how I create music. Um, ideas come and I, I try them out straight away because otherwise um, another idea will come and I'll forget the the first one. A good idea, it's a great thing in um, BandLab, I know it says lyrics up there but actually it's lyrics and notes so it's really a good idea if you get ideas and you don't want to forget them you just type in so I might just put um, stop at bar uh, 31 and add riser and then uh, again I'll save that we can close it and it'll be there in case I suddenly forget what I'm doing which I do very often so I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put it in at bar 31 checking exactly that it's on the bar line uh, right click paste yeah I've, I perhaps want to stop so it's stop at bar 33 and it's obviously too too long I'm thinking of bringing it back there and shortening it from the front this time so we're missing out the front oops uh, the the quieter bit and we're coming in straight away at bar 31 it might be too much let's find out oh yeah <laughs> That works. I think I want to take something out at bar 31. Let's just experiment. We'll, we'll bring the the drums back. Let's go from here. See how that sounds. Yeah, that's quite good. Let's save that. Well, a really great thing that BandLab does is um, this thing here. Go to revision page. That tells me the or shows me the project history. So here is the project history. Uh, currently, it's um, a bunch of white and green dots. So let's have a look what that actually means. And what we have is every time I've saved, here it is. So I've made about uh, uh, oh, six or seven saves now and if I wanted to go to the first one 24 minutes ago there it is and I can hear it and it shows you the progress here this is how I started the song and we could have a quick listen to that and then perhaps the second version I saved 18 minutes ago you can see the green uh, dot has moved up and I can actually see graphically that um, I took away the drums, so it's much less prominent. And we can also go to any part of this version and start from there. No, we can't. We've got to, <laughs> we've got to start it first, and then we can click there. Now this is absolutely such a fantastic feature because it is very easy to get lost in a song. You've made loads of edits and in a lot of doors, digital audio workstations, you can save it, but all you have is like a, a number or a date or a, you know, a piece of text saying Deep House 1, Deep House 2 or stuff that isn't that useful, but this is incredibly useful because we get a, a graphic score and we get um, the exact time you can see if I hold on the mouse there over two minutes ago it says Wednesday April the 4th of 
2018 at 8.04 p.m. Uh, let's try another one. How, what time did we start this off? 24 minutes ago, it was 7.42 p.m. Now, as I said, this is incredibly useful. Uh, also, for teachers and students, we have a great record of how we constructed our song. And, for example, when you when you need evidence for uh, examinations and let's say GCSE submissions we have great evidence and we could do a snapshot of that a screen save um, I'm not sure if we can download it uh, nope not as such there are some good programs though that you can uh, scroll down and allow it to scroll down now the other beautiful thing um, beautiful thing might be an exaggeration but the one I think I really like is if I think actually that last version no let's give an extreme example I change my mind and I think actually I like that you know I want to go back to that I'm not I'm doing this for an example but what I would do um, is go to the red microphone Want to keep going? Continue in the mix editor. I say, okay, um, let's go back to where I started from because let's say I've gone down the wrong road or I've I've just got, I've done a couple of bars I'm thinking, actually, no, this is not really going in the right direction. And for a quick example, I'm going to just add some uh, completely different samples. So let's have a, a verse, a riser verse. Oh, didn't expect that. That's not what I want. Siren Echo Riser. Okay, that's quite good. That's, okay, so I'm going to put that there. I'm going to rewind. Have a listen. Ooh, I do like that. I must remember that. Uh, again, if you find a sample that you like, make a note of it. So, Siren Echo Riser. Uh, let's go to my lyrics. Ah, now this is a different version, so I can't see what I've written before. But I'm still going to put in Siren Echo Riser. I can't spell. Rizda. Riser. There we go. Uh, I'm going to save it and now what I'm going to do is go back to the revision page and we'll now see what they call fork a fork and this is what a fork is so let's go down and now you can see what has happened I have forked off to the right and this is my latest version as as depicted by the fact that it's higher now all my versions are still here uh, and let's say at a later date I'm thinking well yeah I like that riser but actually no let's go back to um, the latest version so let's try that there we go we can see it already and I'm back once again to to the to an earlier version uh, there, that's come back. Stop at bar 31 and add riser, which I did. Uh, let's go to those loops. The riser's still there, so if I can uh, find it again, I should have written it down. <laughs> well, I know I did, but I perhaps on paper would have been used as well. Was it uh, Siren? No, not that one. Siren Echo? That's it. Great. Right. Where might that go? Yeah, I think I could use that a lot. Siren Echo Riser. Let's just uh, let's just try it there. Uh, okay. Where were we? Let's go from here.
Very nice. I'm happy with that. Save it. And let's have a quick look at the um, revision history now. See what that looks like. Go to revision page. Um, view project history. You can see this is uh, processing in progress, so it's not coming up. Check back later. It'll take about a couple of minutes. Right, so you can imagine I could go to this one and then I could have a fork coming up here or I could have a fork coming up here and whatever I do it's being recorded it means we can listen back to them we could even go back and think uh, after finishing a track I still want to take it back and maybe do a, a remix or an edited version it's a great feature it really is